Hello, welcome back to my blog, Edith English Literature. Today, we are reading William Blake's beautiful poem, The Sick Rose. As we all know, William Blake is a notable romantic writer. In his writing, we can find out a beautiful pictorial quality, the quality that arrests our mind and invests a kind of sense. That sensation or that realization is of two separate planks of understanding this world, the world of this nature. The nature and its innocence and its purity is being expressed. Whereas the beauty of our mind that arrests towards that goal of understanding the innocence it is our world, it is our realization of this experience that gradually creep in into our understanding. So that two separate worlds, innocence and experiences are popping up in his poetry. In many of his poems or anthologies are divided in separate sects that is songs of innocence and songs of experiences. Here in this poem, The Sick Rose, we will find a peculiar sensation or peculiar understanding of the notion of beauty, purity as well as its corruption. The world of innocence, the purity and essence is the rose, whereas the one that is gradually creeping in, in love of rose is a kind of journey of experiences. Even though from the worm's point of view, it is gradually creeping in or rather peeping through into the rose and making its whole and sucking its innocence, it gradually leads into experiences. So the corruption is the very warm and the innocence is the very rose itself. So let's concentrate in this poem and try to decipher its meaning in its true logical way of understanding. Innocence is the part of God or godliness or the purity. The essence of every natural object, in fact, each and every natural object has its purity. In every human being, there is a journey of innocence, journey of purity. And it is like that of Christ's appeal. But slow but slow, the process is inching towards the way we call it experience or the world. So here in this poem, the rose which is included, the poem The Sick Rose which is included in the experience poems or song of experience, here you will find that the worm itself is the very symbol of pollution, corruption that is gradually creeping in or peeping through into the rose. So it states the simple meaning that however pure, however innocent we remain, there is a one, there is a experience that leads us into its pollution and ultimately or ultimate destruction. Or rather it is our fate to live in the world of experiences and gradually losing the innocence of God or innocence of nature. William Blake's poems are always symbolic and here the symbolic state is the very rose and the worm. The rose is the symbol of innocence whereas worm is the symbol of experiences. Now the relationship between the worm and the rose is a love relationship but here the love relationship is in destructive way it leads into destruction or corruption or rather experiences gradually snatch away or elicit the very spirit of innocence from rose and it become corrupt one. We can hear the same sort of journey of our experiences or the similar sort of explanation is there in other romantic poems by William Wordsworth or Coleridge. In Coleridge Christabel there we find that uh, Christabel is gradually losing his 
losing her innocence through the experience through the sexual experience of that sort and here also in the mention of the retreat you will find that man has the child early childhood is just a step forward from and the abode of innocence of of the godly abode so gradually as we become man and manly we gradually leads into experiences similar sort of william watson in the, in the recollections poems of early childhood there we find the journey of the man from innocence to experiences so in in simple meaning it states that each and every man is as beautiful as innocent as like that of rose and its beauty but gradually the warmth or the experiences of different sorts pollutes us the senses pollute us and we gradually be, become a corrupted sort O rose, thou art sick, the invisible worm that flies in the night, in the howling storm, hath found out thy bed of crimson joy. So here, the rose, which is a symbol of beauty, which is a symbol of innocence, cannot have its innocence intact when the worm finds its path, peeps through in, into the rose petal and pollutes it by experiences or worms eats its lips or eats its petals. There is a kind of crimson joy. Crimson joy is obviously a, is a kind of a carnal pleasure. That pleasure is destructive one, experienced one or rather it gradually gradually destroys the very mart of innocence, very mart of purity. And, uh, and the destruction of the purity is like that of eating of the petals by the worms. And his dark secret love does thy life destroy. The secret love which is dark one, which is experience sought, which is a corruptive one, gradually pollutes the very innocence of rose. The short, brief poem in this, this song of experience will find that how Rose is gradually losing its power of innocence and leads herself into the world of experiences. So each and every man is a symbol of Rose from its journey from God and gradually it leads into experiences and losing the very mart of the spirit of the innocence, the spirit of God or the very spirit of the caliber or the spirit or the supremacy of Christly one or and gradually leads into the becomes a slave of these experiences and becomes a victim of that pollution that corruption and ultimately destroys or makes a detached path from that professed path of God. The worms still suffer the roses and gradually sucks its innocence. In our experiences of life, gradually, day by day, it leads us into losing those innocences, those parts of innocence, those, those parts of natural bliss, those parts of godly feelings. We gradually leads ourselves into destruction, into the path of self-destruction. And that is the very fate of us. That is the very fate of our existence. William Blake finds this worm as an agent of passion. That agent of passion is everywhere in our life. In our way from life to death, from birth to the grave, we will find that there are so many of the agents of passions that gradually comes and attracts us, eludes us and gradually corrupts us and makes our destruction final. So in, in, in that way of from journey from innocence to experience as our fate or our destiny is there, we can have that God, we can have that path of our costly one, we can come back to that costly one if we can make these agents allow or make this agent away from our innocence. But that is a hard one, divine one. 
and that divinity or the path of divinity is the only way by which we can come back from those world of experiences into that world of joys, into that world of innocence. So I think you have gone through all this poem and understand a bit the very core theme of this poem. If there is any difficulty in understanding this particular short or brief poem, you can just pop up and ask me any question. I will try my best to answer you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Like, share and comment.